I'd like to give a thank you to Coon Company for sponsoring this video. Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Today is Tuesday, September 12th, and you guys will not be watching this part of the video until several months from now. So the purpose of today's video is going to be to try to show the difference in feed loss between cut and uncut bales. This is being made possible by the fact that we're gonna be using the Kuhn VB560, which has knives. So here's what's gonna happen in this video. We're gonna take the Kuhn FC4061 TCD and the John Deere 7920. We're gonna be cutting our last cutting of hay down. I'm gonna make some of the bales cut and some of the bales uncut. Tomorrow, we're gonna come through and make these bales wet and then we're gonna wrap them to try to increase the palliability across all of the bales. And by doing so, hopefully we can maximize the usage that the cows are gonna be getting out of each and every bale that we feed out. So tomorrow we'll come in, we'll make roughly half of them cut, half of them uncut, we'll throw them into the tube. So we're gonna make them silage bales. They'll have to sit there for several weeks so that they can ferment. And then this winter, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set up the feeder to try to capture whatever is left in the feeder after so many hours. So uh, theoretically, the cut bales should have less remaining in the feeder when we're done. So we're gonna test that out today. So what do you say we get started? Wednesday, September 13th, and we are about to start baling. Dad just finished raking out here, and this material is looking very green. Uh, it was really, really cold this morning, and it's just getting to t-shirt weather about an hour ago. So hopefully this stuff turns out to be pretty good. Feels dry to the touch, but boy, does that look green. We're gonna start out with making cut bales and then we're gonna drop the blades out, which we can all do from the cab. Let's get started. We just got our first bale. You always wanna hop out on the first bale anytime you start baling, just to make sure that the baler actually wrapped on these newer balers. And this one's always been really good to me. And uh, they're pretty good at telling you when they don't wrap, but just in the off chance that you know something's missed or whatever we always like to get out and double check just to make sure that the first one always works good uh, we just strung up a new roll of net wrap so it's always a good time to check to make sure that everything's working properly i see net wrap on it i think we're good You don't think you can lift it up or is it too small? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. 
Our average moisture is sitting right at 55%, which is on the higher of the range of what we want, but it's still in the good range. So we're gonna finish baling here. I'm making these bales extremely short because these bales are extremely, extremely dense. And uh, we tried picking them up with the 4020, couldn't do it. So Travis is bringing out the deer skid steer and uh, we'll be using the JCB as well to handle these bales, which is a good thing that we have such uh, large skid loaders that they can handle this stuff, but this is gonna be beautiful feed. dark we have this handy dandy bale buggy that Kuhn sent down that allows us to be able to weigh the difference between the cut and uncut bales we got this hooked up to the truck we can go ahead and turn it on all right so we're gonna grab two bales uh, they all should be similar in size except for maybe one, uh, but I'm hoping we don't grab that one. <laughs> um, I am gonna moisture test each one as well to make sure that they are the same moisture. Um, the average today was anywhere between like 60% when we first started. Um, that first bale had some 60s in it, but everything after that, it just kind of gradually came down and the lowest I saw was right around 50%, which is right where we were aiming. So uh, I think it's gonna make really good feed, but we'll find out. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Those are getting a little heavy. These should be the densest bales that we have because they are cut. Um, by cutting the material, you're making it more dense, packing it into a, a tighter area. So moisture in this bale is sitting at 58.8%. I'd say the average was slightly lower than that, but this is the number I'm gonna use for this bale. So one of these bales you can tell is actually cut and that's the one on the right because when I had gone up to the upper farm the cutter was still in for this bale. The one on the left looks a lot neater but I can just about guarantee you that one on the right is going to be a heck of a lot nicer feed. So we're going to take this left one, use this for measurement as our uncut bale. Our second uncut bale weighs in at 2,650 pounds. My verdict is that the cut bales come in 100 pounds heavier than the uncut bales. So the bales that are cut, we're able to fit more material, more material into them and we're increasing the palliability by cutting them up. 
and hopefully reducing our waste because when the cows take bites out of the feeder, they aren't able to pull a whole plant out with it and they're able to take smaller bites uh, out of the feeder. That's the theory anyway. So this winter we'll see how these bales turn out. For right now, we're gonna wrap these up. My theory on the dry material is, is that there probably will be even a bigger disparity in weight between the cut and uncut because when the material is dry, you're able to squish it down a lot more. In silage bales, you're not gonna see, in my opinion, probably as big of a difference because with all the water in them, the material's not as likely to compress, but you need that compression to make a better bale when you go to ensile it in the tube. Let's get to wrapping. You can tell it's a good silage bale when it's falling apart at the seams. Here's our line. This bale is uncut. Everything to the right, 15 bales, is cut. And I can tell a difference just by looking at them here. It's now been six months since we had wrapped this fourth cut at 50% moisture. Let's go ahead and open the tube up and see what we got. I would say this stuff is fully ensiled. What I'm gonna be feeding out for the next few days, next week or two, is gonna be uncut material. When I get closer to the middle, I'm gonna start doing feed tests. I'm gonna lay out a tarp, set the bale feeder on it, and I'm gonna feed a uncut bale. I'm gonna take the leftover material that the cows don't eat and weigh it, and then I'll do the same for the cut material halfway down the line, and we'll see if we can see a difference. But this is the uncut stuff, and it looks pretty good, if you ask me. I'm sure the cows will just devour this. Couldn't do that again if you tried. Right down the duct tape. Right. That outermost bale is exposed to some of the most oxygen, which is why you'll see that there's that white mold uh, around part of it. But as we move in, there'll be less and less oxygen. But so far, even for an end bale, that one looks really nice. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out a tarp underneath the bale feeder and I'm hoping to gauge how much waste we have between the cut and the uncut bales. The theory is, is that the cut bales should have less waste, be less waste because the cows are more likely or more uh, apt to eat more of it because cutting the material makes it more palatable to the cattle versus if there's long stringy weeds in it. Uh, it all kind of gets mixed together. And uh, when it's cut down like that, it's more used to the cows as well. So let's lay this out.
Every time I've set this up so far, we've always got at least a half inch of rain. So last night we got an inch and this is what we've got left. It's not much, but at least the tarp is holding now. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take one of those cut bales. We're gonna do the same thing with the tarp now that I've got a working setup and uh, we'll see what the weight difference is, if I can get a weight difference between the cut and uncut material. It's not gonna include everything because if you look at the ground out around the ring, there is gonna be stuff that the cows pull out and drop on the ground and it's gonna be next to impossible for me to reclaim any of that. So I just brought the tarp up into the yard where I can work with it a little bit more. And by the time I folded the tarp all together, this is what I was ended up with. Uh, for one reason or another and as you can see there's water sitting in it because it did rain um, but I'm gonna do everything I can to get this down to the dry material so we'll throw this into a bucket I'll let the water drain off I'll heat it up and we'll just be left with the, with the dry matter and I'll weigh it that way to so that way our results aren't quite as skewed but in theory we should end up with less on the next test because that's going to be a cut bale. So this is something that I wouldn't have caught without doing this experiment and um, it's really hard to mitigate this kind of stuff other than to constantly be picking up junk. Um, but this looks like my guess is is like a really really old Mountain Dew can or some kind of can of some some type so this was left on the tarp it was mixed in with the rest of the feed luckily the cows did not consume this uh, but if it's aluminum that could really do some damage just being metal in the cows room and so I'm glad they didn't eat this but I wouldn't have caught that if I didn't do this this test and I'm sure there's a lot of this stuff that goes uh, unnoticed or uh, it gets fed without being realized. So we've got a good half to a third of a bucket worth. I've got the bulk of the hay into the bucket now. I'm going to reuse this tarp because I've already gone through several tarps trying to make this work and I think I found the way to do it. And that's with giving it enough slack around the edges to be able to move around when the cows hit it. Because when you watch the time-lapse videos, you can see that the hay ring is just doing circles out there. Um, I lost one grommet out of this, but I think that the tarp is good enough to go through another round. I wonder what happens if I push down on it. About to feed the cows today we've got a bale of uncut material along with a bale of cut material so looking at the face you can tell that this has a lot longer uh, stems in it cut bale more dense material and on the outside you can see that we've got some longer sticks on the outside that's because I pulled the knives out to help hold the bale together from the time that it was made to the time it makes it into the feeder let's go ahead and put these in Looks like the tarp held up pretty good. There you can see what we've got left. Let's take it up and try to weigh and compare. What I find interesting is that looking around the base of the feeder is that there's not as much wastage as there was around the other feeder. So with the shorter hay, when the cows reach in and grab the hay and pull it out, they're not gonna have the long strands that are hanging out of their mouths. And it's really noticeable around the outside of the feeder and I wish that I could uh, measure this area so that I could see how much they were losing outside of the feeder, but I, I can only measure inside. And um, I feel like there would be a huge difference out here just by looking at it. I can tell that there's hardly, hardly as much waste as there was with the uncut material. We come over to where I fed the uncut bale and you can still see all the waste three days later. And it's not even just where the ring was, it's within like a 15 foot radius of where I fed the bale out. 
and you don't have that with the other one. This video has been a long time coming, so I'm gonna to try to go through this as fast as I can. I've got the two hay samples in front of me, one from the cut bale and one from an uncut bale. And we should have started with similar sized bales. There's more material in the cut bale as we found earlier on in the video. And uh, I got the moisture brought down in these two samples within, I would say, 5% of each other. Uh, I didn't go and throw them in the oven because I didn't want Hannah's casserole tasting like forage for a month. So I just opted to set them in front of a dehumidifier and I've been turning them every day for the last two weeks and they feel similar. I would say that they're two within 5% of each other. But I'll go ahead and let you guys guess which sample you think is from the cut bale and which one you think is from the uncut bale. Here's the two samples. I'm gonna go ahead and give them a little shake. I think it's pretty obvious, isn't it? So we are left with the uncut bale in the green bucket. I'm kind of surprised just by looks how close the material is that we were able to capture in the tarp. I did this test six times and the last two times uh, got me usable samples. So looking at these two, I would guess that maybe the cut bale has slightly more material in it. And I'm guessing that it could possibly be because the material is much smaller because it's cut up, the le there's more leaves. Um, the stems are ground up finer, whereas with this material, it may be easier for the cows to be able to get more of that. Although in weight, just by feeling them, they feel the exact same to me. So I'm gonna put them on the scale and we're gonna weigh them quick and uh, we'll see how it turned out. I'm gonna use the same bucket to weigh these two samples. We're gonna start with the uncut, see how much we got. Try to do this without spilling. On the uncut bale, we ended up with four pounds, four ounces worth of material. Let's go ahead and weigh the other bucket. A couple rocks in there. Interestingly enough, the cut material has five pounds, six ounces worth of material left over. One thing I noticed though, as I was dumping this bucket in, was just how much rock was in this particular bale. Uh, it went through and sifted through the other sample and the only thing that I pulled out from the other sample from the uncut bale was this virtually waste, weightless stick. I just pulled out all the rocks that I found in the cut bale. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh it again. Scratch that, almost all around. As you can see, we're left with three pounds, eight ounces worth of material in the cut bale. One thing that I wanna note is that there are just so many variables that went into this that I would not expect the results to be the exact same every time, even though it did turn out how I expected it to. Um, one huge thing that I would really like to test for is how much hay the, pull, the cows pull out of the hay rings themselves. Just going down there and looking at the ground after I've moved them to a new location, there is so much more material left on the ground where the cows have been pulling the material out of the hay ring as I showed earlier in the video. I honestly didn't expect how much material I was able to recover be so close uh, in weight. I was expecting a little bit more variance there um, and as you can see, I actually ended up with more in the cut bale to begin with until I took the rocks out of uh, both samples I checked. But uh, this bale came out of a particularly rocky spot. I just know that just by how much rock was in it um, out in that field. And I expect that this one came from a different part of the field where there wasn't any. But um, interesting results. This was fun to do. It's been a long time coming and a long time in the works. Um, but that was our result is that there actually was less material left over with this. But I think, as I said before, where we're really going to see a difference is how much material the cows actually pull out when they're eating and how much they waste dropping it onto the ground. So anyway, take away from this video what you will. I hope you learned something. I know I did in the process and, uh, that pretty much wraps up this video. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. All Hot Farms work. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.